Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today for 2D Drafting, a part of our What's New in Solid Edge SC9 webinar series. Um, my name is Diana Dietrich. I'm the Marketing Specialist here at Swish Technologies, and I will be your host for today. Um, so just a little on Swish. We've been a leading provider and partner of Siemens CLM for over 11 years, and our team is dedicated in providing you the best software solutions, technical support, and process-based training to help you design and manufacture better. Our commitment to changing the way designers and manufacturers learn and leverage PLM tools has been a major focus for us and will continue to be our goal moving forward. Presenting today is application um, engineer Dylan Malik. For nearly two decades, Dylan has seen the growth and changes of CAD design and understands how the latest technology has really benefited many companies' processes with hands-on experience in sheet metal fabrication, structural design, uh, surfacing, rendering, animation, and 2D drafting to, uh, to 3D modeling. He's a certified Solid Edge professional and uh, is a sought-after Swish training instructor with a great working knowledge of best practices that can help your team better deliver uh, products painlessly. Um, Today, Dylan will be talking 2D drafting in Solid Edge. If you're given 2D drafting duties at your workplace, you most likely don't enjoy the amount of time it takes to complete, um, as there's so much that goes into it. With SC9, you can create the most accurate, high-quality 2D drawings with key components that make up Solid Edge, uh, Edge's powerful drafting system, all without hassle. Dylan's going to show us how new, or how, uh, new as well as updated features can really help you accelerate your workflow and make a lot of your 2D drafting troubles a thing of the past. If you have any questions, please feel free to add these into the questions box located in your GoToWebinar panel. Dylan will have your questions answered during the Q&A portion taking place right after the presentation. So now, without uh, any more waiting, I'm going to go ahead and um, send this over to Dylan. And he will right. take it away. Thank you, Diana. All right. So uh, we're gonna again. We're just gonna cover what's new in ST9 uh, draft. Uh, I got uh, several examples already. Uh, I created for you down here. Uh, so the first one uh, is, is is pretty big. Is the reordering of your views uh, when you create them after you create them. So in the previous <clears throat> version, of Solid Edge, when you uh, brought a view in. It was pretty much in that view. Uh, if, if you wanted to change it, you were kind of had to kind of restart uh, the process. Uh, so, for example, let's uh, go in here. I took, I don't I didn't create this part, so again, I don't know the orientation. Uh, but let's say you place it in here incorrectly. <clears throat> and uh, at any given time now. Uh, you can take it from any view that you want to reorder this or re uh, realign this with. Uh, you do have the options again if you do know the uh, if you do know the actual named view, uh, you can set it to, to how you want. Uh, again, I, I'm, you may not necessarily be the person who created this, so you may want to change it yourself <clears throat> to your own specifics. So again, if you just go back into just use custom, uh, this gives you a multitude of windows. I like just using the little window in the bottom corner here. To rearrange it, so uh, let's just go ahead and say we're looking at that view. Update. There we go. So the flat's looking at us instead of going up, and it's on the left now instead of the right. So any given time, even after dimensions are placed, you can actually go back and uh, reattach. Uh, those will reattach to the geometry. If you change it completely, uh, it not necessarily it may not necessarily work. Uh, so the next thing we're going to show you. Uh, to, to add break lines to your geometry, so this is kind of this part's kind of big for this title block. So there's really nothing in the middle. Uh, so let's go ahead and add uh, take some of this geometry away. Uh, go ahead, and put dimensions on before or after. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's going to scale the dimension uh, accordingly. So to access the break lines, just right click the view that you want to add them to. They add break lines, and it's going to give you several different options here. Uh, so <clears throat> this round, let's go ahead and just do the, the pipe break. Style. Uh, so what's new about this is the ability. Now you notice we can actually attach to endpoints, midpoints, uh, type geometry. <clears throat> and what's nice about that, it allows us to. It will actually maintain that for you. So if I say I want to go from there to perhaps there, and uh, finish this off, we're all good. Go ahead and rearrange this. Uh, just a nice feature of it. Uh, whether this view is created before or after, if it's created after. It automatically inherits the same break section as the previous uh, view. 
but if, if you had this view already created, you can always go back and say inherit break lines from the previous view, and it would automatically do it after the fact. Uh, so you're, you're not stuck either way. And again, you notice the, uh, <clears throat> the scale automatically. So let's go into this part just by double clicking and uh, let's just make a quick change to this. Uh, go into the branch just by picking it, and uh, you notice the actual link actually stays exactly where I left it. So that is new for SD9. The ability to uh, keep those linked together. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, shrink that back down. All right, another thing. Uh, you notice when I updated this. Uh, every release, it does get faster and faster. Uh, so one thing they've added in this release, if uh, I can go to settings options under the general tab, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there is an enable multi-core process update kind of uh, selection. Uh, if you have a multi-core processor, it will multi-thread and actually take advantage of that and actually uh, make your drafts even even faster. So every release, that's uh, that's one of the goals is to make draft fast, draft drafting faster, and uh, they have succeeded pretty much every release. Uh, but that is new. Uh, it should be on by default. I'm not sure how it behaves if you don't have multi-core uh, processors. Uh, but uh, that is uh, good news for just speeding up things. <coughs> All right, uh, next thing, or uh, looking at uh, the table font. Uh, you know this is all kind of pretty much a sim similar font and size. Uh, now if you just double click the table <clears throat> and you get this little gold uh, kind of edge bar here, uh, this allows you to go in and, uh, for the example, this header, let's make that point, uh, .25 and let's change its font. Um, so you can... Modify geometry, you can go in, still double clicking into, maybe you don't want that to say, uh, have the uh, file extension on it. <clears throat> and that allows you to still manipulate that. Again, but that's just a real nice option. They give you the ability to go in, change multiple cells at one time. If you wanted to change everything to maybe 2.5 in that column or 0.2, you can do that as well. <clears throat> or individual cells. So that's, uh, that's new to SD9. Something else. Let me uh, undo that last one. I'm going to need that text that big. Uh, let me open up this file again. So just by double clicking, going into the assembly of it. Uh, I put a variable on here, uh, just a PMI dimension. And what I did is, if you look at it, I exposed it in the variable table as a uh, variable name. Just keep, keep that in mind for a second. I just wanted to go ahead and show you that uh, we have a subassembly here. Inside that subassembly, uh, we have uh, this little bottom plate, and inside that bottom plate, there's another subassembly, and I had inside there, we have some bolts. What I did is actually use an occurrence property override. Uh, so that's a couple subassemblies now, <clears throat> but now our build materials will actually acknowledge that at the top level drafts. So uh, if I change my build material to show, you know, the, the subassembly tax level, and that would just be by going to list control and tell it to do an exploded list. And this is use level base. It looks good. Uh, so right there is actually the, the bolt. That there's actually only one of them in there, and I told it to be a quantity of four. Uh, so it tunnels down and actually looks at that actual unit property and brings that up to the bill of material, which it didn't do before. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, the ability to Format your uh, your data. I showed you the 200 uh, body length, so I do have uh, the exposed variable. It's a custom property, but I can use that as exposed variable. If I'm going to add that into the here, uh, now you actually you notice we have there's a format button here. Uh, so this allows you to format your text, uh, exposed variable, a uh, whole multitude of things. Uh, you can set it as uh, date and time. Uh, here it's just it's just uh, 200, so I can change the round off if I wanted to, uh, or maybe do some other types of units. Uh, but you do now have the ability to format your text so it shows up properly, properly in your bill of material. 
Uh, previously, you only had the ability to make that happen in your callout box uh, or your callout properties. Uh, so now that is carried over to your bill of materials, uh, which is very nice. All right. Properties. All right. <clears throat> and when I've, when I've taught Solid Edge, I've taught it for years. I always tell people, you know, if you have a view like this and you want it to be set a specific way, uh, it, it's not it's conducive to place all the views and have to go back to each view, go to properties, set it. Uh, for example, if you wanted to, I typically would not show that with uh, all the hidden edges on. I would kind of show it in that view, but then you have to go to each view and do it. So I always tell people, place one view, then just use principle to, you know, pull all your other views off. Uh, but now you can actually go in and select, just shift select all the views, and now you have the ability to go into properties on all the views at one time and say, you know, I want to turn off all those hidden edges, and I want to make sure all my tangent edges are on all these views. Hit apply, and there you go. <clears throat> so instead of what took three steps before, now you can just pretty much do in a single um, selection. All right, so that, that, that's, a, that's a huge time saver right there. All right, uh, another, I guess a time saver because uh, in the past, if you wanted to uh, pull sections off your views, and you would uh, basically get a type of section that you wanted, uh, but once you placed it, and if you wanted to change that uh, to maybe you know, show the full view instead of just the partial view, you would have to basically recreate that. But now they give you the option to just toggle between the types of views you want. Do you want to do what they call like the, the uh, used to be called paper sand, what it's called section only. So whatever the section crosses gives you that view. Uh, or you can come over here and say, give me the revolved select section view. Update that. You'll notice it gives you the entire section of this view as opposed to just the truncated view. Uh, so you can toggle back and forth between that as many times as you like. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Something they've also added is the whole quantity uh, uh, numeration that you can do in the callout. Uh, so basically, it, you notice you have the whole callout, which has always been here. It gives you the type of hole it is, the counterbore, countersink, the depth, it's threaded, etc. Uh, but they've added this actual other percent QN, uh, and that's coming from, uh, let's go. Right here. So this is uh, what's new for the whole callout. Uh, here's the property text code. So if you want to see it, because here's the percent quantity, gives you the actual whole number. But if you go in the property codes, here's all the codes that you can actually use in that table uh, that doesn't necessarily have a button associated with it, but you can type it in. So here's a whole list. And again, this is available. You don't need a login. Uh, this is just in the what's new in Solid Edge and just follow along the tab. It tells you all the different specific uh, codes to use to make uh, particular items happen in the draft. Uh, so I just have a percent QN in there. Hit OK. So just pick one of the holes. Uh, so the QN is the value at the end. So it tells you it's 3x. So it looks at all the holes that you created in that set. It automatically extracts that quantity for you. So you don't have to put quantity 3x, et cetera, anymore. Uh, you can just use that. Uh, and for those who, again, don't want to have to look at that list, uh, you can always, you know, save these uh, as, a, as a custom property uh, so you don't have to look it up every single time. All right, so that's the uh, whole quantity selection now is automatic. Uh, there's not really much to show in this one. Um, uh, basically, they changed the style of jumper in your connectors uh, for your uh, 2D uh, path creation. So this is the old style where you just had a loop over but now it puts a break and a dot shows you uh, the jumper in a, in a line. Uh, and another thing they've added, uh, a lot of times if you opened up files from AutoCAD, uh, it, there may be some empty layers or layers which really doesn't have much geometry or anything in them, uh, and you would always bring those in and it would just be empty layers, uh, the huge list. But now they have this uh, delete empty layer button. Uh, so if I click this, I go, I actually deleted all last three layers, so I just have the default and circuit now. Uh, so it will go and automatically just get rid of layers that are just uh, no geometry or anything associated with them. All right, so now for the last little slide here, or uh, example, 
Uh, we can also now change title blocks and just by easily going to the background. All right, so this was a huge pain before. If you ever wanted to change your title block, uh, not the size, but the actual physical title block. So if you wanted to change it from uh, one spot to maybe horizontal to vertical, copy, go into the new file, paste, and go in the background. It, it was kind of tedious. But now if you just go in the background, turn on the background, just right-clicking, go in the background, turn on my background sheets, I just go into that B size, which I know I'll, that's one I wanted to change. Uh, and if you just go and say replace background. All right, so all you have to do, let me browse out. I think it's in here. Yep, I have a, I just have a template that I created that has a different title block in. I'm just going to click, click it. Ask, uh, I have a couple different ones. I just want to use the B size. Say OK, and there we have it. So it immediately just swaps out the old title block with the new. All the properties. Or, or excuse me, your call out properties come along with it as well. Uh, so that that that's a huge time saver. All right. So I can just then you can just come over and turn off your background sheet. That goes away. Now you notice all my B size sheets that I had in here have all changed to this uh, short style kind of title block. Uh, retrieving of dimensions. All right. So uh, it's uh, the, the the explanation they give is is uh, or the call out of it, it's really kind of not really what it is. If I retrieve a dimension, retrieve multiple views, it doesn't basically retrieve. You still have to pick each view that you want to retrieve dimensions from. But with this button on right here, this will actually duplicate dimensions uh, that it would typically always kind of uh, ignore. So with that off, which is kind of the default how it used to be, if I click this, you notice I don't get any dimensions. If we turn it on, which is now the default, I click it, uh, you notice I get some dimensions that weren't being selected before. So basically, it's duplicating this thickness chain right here. Uh, so you can drag that around. And uh, let me go ahead and reposition this now that I have some more room. All right. And the last thing uh, to show uh, is tolerance table. So uh, when you place tolerances on your dimensions or your different types of class, uh, so if we go over to, uh, for example, let's uh, put a dimension on this hole. So I'm just going to pull an auxiliary view off this face. Let me position it a little better. Let me go ahead and just truncate this. You can add, uh, oops, grab the text. Uh, you can actually just kind of shrink this by just dragging the window around it, uh, update that, and... Uh, Gives you a nice little view there. Let's move that over here. All right, so now I can pull a dimension off this hole. And let's say we're going to actually place this as a class hole and tell it, you know, what type. I'll just leave it at H5. Go ahead and just uh, place it. And uh, you can uh, display it as uh, uh, tolerance, limits, etc. I'm going to say just, I think actually it's going to be to place it. There we go. With the tolerance on there, I didn't uh, tell it what type to use. All right, so if you place those on uh, all your dimensions, if you have specific dimensions that need to hold specific tolerance class types, now that will actually be retrieved. So if I just run this, it goes through. And there's nothing to really go tell it other than what type of properties that you want to add in the columns. Again, you can remove, add, move these around, just like you do your bill of materials. So I'll say OK, and just go ahead and place that. So there is my value in the class type and the upper lower limits uh, specified you know again that's uh, customizable to however you like to uh, do it all right uh, that that is all is pretty much what's new in st9 and uh, anybody have any uh, any questions Diana um, so we actually have quite a few questions in the queue today. Um, so if we don't get to your question today um, and it's not answered during this live session, I'll make sure to send um, over any unanswered questions to Dylan uh, immediately following this uh, presentation, and he'll get back to you um, in the next two days by phone or by email. So um, Dylan, the first question that we have in our queue is, when it comes to call out, is there a library or a specific source I can use to see or reuse codes that I need? Uh, it's, 
uh, I think the property, I think you're referring to the property callouts, like the whole callouts or the different types of uh, reference. I've, uh, yeah, there is actually, if you go to the help file, uh, if you go up to the uh, Learn Solid Edge, hit the help file and actually type in uh, property, callout properties, it will give you a whole list. I don't think it takes you to this particular table, but this, these are very similar to what you would get there. Uh, and then once, uh, yeah, once again, once you once you get the setup that you want, maybe feature call out. Uh, let's maybe throw a you know a, a smart thread in there as well, and go ahead and just call this uh, my dem and save it. Uh, so the next time you use it, I have a couple different ones in here. So there's the first one I used, and now there's the second one. So you can just toggle through all this, and you can put as many as you like in there. Uh, so once you have them in there, you you look them up one time, see what they actually do, uh, place it in the correct orientation, and save it, and you're, you're good to go. So another question that we have is, um, is there a limit of views I can put on my draft drawing? Uh, no, I mean, uh, there's unlimited. I mean, again, you can go back and change them anytime you want. Uh, but once the views are placed, uh, you can go and use uh, what they call principal view button. Like I don't have an ISO view on this sheet. I can uh, go start pulling, depending on the orientation that you pull it, left, right, top, kind of left, bottom. Uh, you can place it. You can also uh, shade your views uh, if you wanted to, so they, they come across in the same uh, shade that, uh, or you know, same material that was created with in the actual part or assembly. Uh, so that will duplicate that. So uh, technically, yeah, you can put as many section and details on the on the view that you that you like. Um, another question we have is um, so what is the benefit of showing um, a broken view? Uh, well, in this uh, well in this example, you know, I, I used to actually do conveyors for a living, and they would be three, four hundred feet long. Uh, and uh, without having broken views, there there was no way to get all the detail on the sheet because you always had a you always had to scale them. Uh, excuse me, wrong way. So small that to get the dimensions, you couldn't really see the detail. So uh, that's this. This was really a prime example. So what's again without this on here? Uh, even though uh, I'm on a B size title, or I think a C size title block, you go to D size, but again, you're going to be losing uh, the size and geometry, so you can scale it up. So you just have to get bigger sheets. But yeah, that's just a prime example. Again, you can uh, you can add as many breaks as you want. Uh, so I just did a single break here. So maybe you kind of would like to be able to, oops, delete the view. Ah, goodness. Trying to make something simple here. There we go. So I'm using a, a training laptop, and it's not the fastest. So uh, again, just right click, add break lines. Uh, let's do a different type. You can. Come over here and say, I want to remove that section, and remove that section, and remove that section, and uh, finish. So, uh, again, there's no detail. You don't need to show anything. It just makes dimensioning a lot cleaner. So, that just uh, makes it really easy to do. Uh, you notice the top view automatically kind of, as long as I go ahead and turn it on, accepts the same as the bottom view. And then we got two more questions in our queue. So, um, one is, uh, how quick is the transition from 2D to 3D? Uh, it's pretty easy, actually. I mean, we actually have a, uh, there's actually a free 2D version of Solid Edge. Uh, you can download it through Siemens website. Uh, and it's basically everything you see here. I mean, obviously, you'd be uh, drawing just like you would in AutoCAD, all these views. But uh, what's nice about it is if you ever went to uh, the 3D, you know, under the sketching tool, if you opened up our part environment, you notice these sketching tools, smart dimensions, sketch profiles, relationships, they're identical to the part environment or a sheet metal environment. So once you kind of learn how to draw in one environment, you go into a sketch here, you'll notice that the menu bars are pretty much identical. So there's your relationships, there's your dimension styles. So once you learn one, you can easily transition in the other. Uh, and it's also nice that we can actually create. So if you if you did create a bunch of 2D geometry, uh, we do have the ability to create uh, 3D, create 3D. 
So you can come over and actually create 3D geometry from your 2D geometry uh, really fast. I think there's some blogs and stuff we have on our uh, YouTube site that show that, um, how to create 2D geometry from, uh, or 3D from 2D. That's a, that's a good question. And we have um, one final question, and it is, so it, it pertains to the dimensions. I noticed um, that as you were working on your drawing, uh, you were able to pull up dimensions pretty quickly. So is this something that you programmed yourself, or is it an automatic thing that SolidEd just recognizes? It, uh, what it's actually doing when I, when I did, the, like on this one, I did the retrieve dimensions. Uh, whatever dimensions that I actually use to create the geometry, uh, well, actually it can be retrieved. Uh, same with the callouts, the annotations. So if you had, uh, you know, like surface finishes or weld callouts, uh, those can be retrieved as well. And it just, uh, you do get the options of what type of geometry you do want to retrieve. Uh, and the new one, the new one was this little button right here where you can duplicate dimensions on multiple views. Uh, and on dimensions themselves, these are all specific uh, dimensions that are a particular style. Uh, but what's right, nice again, and it, like the properties I showed you, where you can change the properties on these, uh, you can change the properties on individual uh, dimensions, change the style of dimension, millimeters, dual units. Uh, something they added in the, in the last release is the ability to access the stuff that you used to have to go to properties to get on dimensions. So maybe you want to change the terminator to, you know, a hollow arrow, uh, or maybe uh, flip the text to the outside, or excuse me, flip the arrow to the outside, etc. Uh, so now that's all accessible right there without actually having to go into the properties and do it. So every release they keep uh, making things like that just easily accessible and look that much faster, uh, so you don't have to spend time messing with the properties. They're just right there. Thanks so much, Dylan. So I'm going to bring it back to myself. Um, show my screen. All right. So um, we hope you guys enjoyed today's session. Um, if your question was not answered during the presentation, um, please know that I will get them all sent to Dylan, um, and he'll get back to you uh, very soon. However, if um, you, know, you want to reach out to us, um, to know more about, say, you know, 2D drafting or you want to learn more about what's new in Solid Edge SP9, please feel free to reach out to me or Dylan by phone or by email. Um, we're more than happy to help. Or if you're already working with the SWISH representatives, please feel free to reach out to them. Either way, we're all here to help you um, uh, meet all of your business goals. So um, uh, we hope you can join us next week. Uh, in, actually, in two weeks, sorry, on October 5 at 2 p.m. Central, Central Time for Integrated Manufacturing, um, where our application engineer, Joe Gisaldi, will bridge the gap between CAD and CAM with the perfect embedded solutions via Solid Edge. All right. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, thanks, Dylan, and uh, hope you guys have a great day. Bye. All right. Thanks, folks.